and Kat is in the shower and she can hear Robert screaming for her to come and be with him and she doesn't know what he's trying to say she can just tell that he's very animated and he needs her to be with him so she gets out of the shower and she walks down the small hallway to the bedroom door and that's where she's met by Robert who says turn around and have a look at that and it's when she turns around and she looks into the mirror that is in the bathroom and she can see the reflection of the shadow person that's been stalking her her entire life except now Robert can also see it the trench coat the hat the gigantic seven foot figure with red burning eyes staring at the both of them but before we get into today's story I just want to say a massive thank you to every single person that has stopped by to listen to this story. Now this was told to me well over a year ago on my other channel, Almost Unbelievable, and now I'm going to tell it to you in story form. So if you like it, please leave a comment, please leave a like, and more importantly, subscribe because that gives me the impetus to carry on making more videos for your enjoyment. Now, let's get into today's story. Kai was born in a little town called Dorado in Puerto Rico. And her grandmother, Maria, was a practicing Santeria. Now, I had to look that up because I wasn't too sure what it was. I believe it's something to do with voodoo or alike, and I do believe that it's a very popular religion as such over in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean but I am of course open to people correcting me on this in the comments. However when she was growing up Kai would often see her grandma Maria chopping the heads off of chickens and she would often be dressed in all white and the room inside of her apartment was always being cleansed there was always sage and the like being burnt inside of those rooms and this was a practice that she had been doing her entire life and now Kai was seeing it as a young child for the first time and her grandma would show her how to perform these rituals and being very young she picked up exactly what you needed to do her mother Maya on the other hand didn't practice Santeria in fact she was against it all, even though from a very young age, her herself had seen some mysterious things in her childhood. Now, Kai, at the age of eight, would see something for the very first time. And this was when she was hanging out with friends and they decided to go and play hide and seek. And where they lived, they had this shed that was off the beaten track, but easily accessible. And Kai thought, what a wonderful place to hide. And it was. For all intents and purposes, there was plenty of things in there that she could squeeze behind. Nobody would be able to find her in there. Or so she thought. Anyway, the room itself was barely lit. There was light coming in through the cracks inside of the wooden shed. But she there, for the very first time, saw something that terrified her. Towards the end of this bench... Not far from where she was, she saw this tall, six foot at least tall, shadowy figure with a hat on. And she stared at it for several seconds, but she couldn't understand it because there should be nobody in that shed. And she could clearly see this figure. She knew it was a living human being, or appeared to be at least a living human being. And she got really scared and she legged it out of there. She ran as fast as she could. She sprinted out of the shed, and not long after leaving the shed, she bumped into her friends who had been looking for her because obviously she was playing hide and seek, and she told them what she'd seen. So the whole group of them went over to the shed to investigate, and there was nothing there. Not long after that, her and her friends all together did actually see the man in a hat this time it wasn't in the shed they were just out playing on the street when Kai saw 
the same figure that she'd seen in the shed crossing the road around about 10 meters in front of them. And she wasn't the only one to see it, everyone in the group saw it too. They all described it as being tall, very tall, with a trench coat on and a hat. And it had no color, it was very dark, very bland. And after viewing it for just several seconds, it disappeared in front of all of them. And they all shared this experience and they all returned home to their families where they retold this same story and nobody believed them. They all just passed it off as being some kind of hallucination that the children had all perhaps seen together and they said there's nothing to worry about. One evening when Kai was 12, her mother and her brother along with herself were all sat down on the couch watching the TV in the living room. The only light source in the living room came from the TV. However, there was a hallway to the left hand side of where the TV was, so just in their peripheral vision to the left hand side, and behind that in the hallway was a light. There was a light on in the hallway behind the TV, and all three of them saw a figure move from one room into the other as it crossed the hallway. Now, Louis, her brother, was terrified. Amaya, she didn't know what to do, but she was the adult and she decided to go investigate. And Kai, being the person that had seen this figure on many different occasions before, was actually quite excited to actually feel vindicated that what they had all just seen was what she had been seeing for most of her life. So she wasn't really scared at all. She was just excited and happy that they had seen this thing and when a mum went to go and investigate of course she found nothing there was nobody there there was no burglar there was no intruder whatever it was it was either a trick of the light or something like that as far as she was concerned not long after this at night times kai would be in bed and she was a heavy sleeper and it took a lot to rise her yet at around about 3 a.m each and every night there would be this loud knocking at the window, which would be enough to wake her up, and she would get up out of the bed, go over to the window to investigate, and there would be nothing there. So Kai told her mum what was going on. She would say every morning, last night this happened, last night this happened, the night before that happened. And eventually her mum didn't believe any of this she just thought her daughter was a little bit crazy and what she did is she sent her away to be evaluated by a psychiatrist because her mother basically thought she was nuts but the psychiatrist performed all kinds of tests and they didn't find anything wrong with her whatsoever in fact they just put it down to paranoia so she didn't have a medical condition but they did say that she was basically just making it all up. But things only got worse after that. After she'd been evaluated and the tests had proved that she wasn't suffering from any kind of mental illness, she would be lying in bed and all of a sudden, the bed would start to shake violently. Not a little bit, but violently. So much so that she thought there was earthquakes happening each and every night. So what she did is she got hold of a app on her phone that would tell her if there was any earthquakes in her vicinity and each night that she would be woken up with the bed shaking she would check her phone and there would be no earthquakes happening at that time it was around this time that she then thought this has to do with the shadow person whatever it is whatever's going on it is definitely happening because of that and she again told her mum and her mum didn't believe her. And yet every night she was being woken up with this terrible shaking of the bed. This one time she was in bed, it started to shake. So she just instinctively reached over to the wall, not opening her eyes just to feel whether or not the room was shaking as well, or was it just the bed? And she soon realized that it was just the bed that was shaking, the wall was not shaking with the bed. So she opened her eyes, and when she opened her eyes, at the bottom of the bed was this 
gigantic figure. She said it was the tallest shadow person she'd ever seen, at least seven feet tall. It was wearing a very long trench coat and it had a hat on and she was terrified. So much so that now for the first time, she actually screamed out for somebody to come and save her. And so her brother Louis, he hears this and he jumps out of his bed and he runs down the hallway and into her room to see what's going on. And this is where for the first time, he sees what she's seen, a seven foot gigantic shadow person. And he just stares. And now the two of them are staring and he's staring and doesn't know what to do except scream because now he's terrified too. So the two of them are screaming. And this is when Amaya comes. She walks into the room and the shadow person disappears. She never gets to see what her two children have just witnessed. Kai, after that, never returned to that room. In fact, she slept for the remainder of the time that she lived there in her brother's bedroom. And she was so terrified that she didn't want to go back. She tried as hard as she could to try and persuade her brother to go and move in and swap rooms so that she could have this room herself. She wanted a bit of privacy. She was getting a little bit older, but she was definitely not willing to go into that room. And yet her brother Louis was like, <laughs> nice try sis, but I saw what you saw and I'm not going in that room either. So for the next two years, the two of them lived together in the same bedroom. So when Kai was old enough, she decided that she was going to move out, but she wasn't going to stay in Puerto Rico. She was gonna to move to Texas in the United States. She got herself a job over there and an apartment and she actually felt for the first time being an independent living on her own that she was now as far away as possible from all that nonsense that was happening back in Dorado and that from now on she was going to live her best life and she wasn't going to be affected by these shadow people ever again. That's what she thought. That wasn't what happened because not long after she had moved in did things start to happen inside of her apartment. She, for the first time, saw a shadow person in the doorway of her living room. She was reading a book, she looked up, and there it was. And she was like, I can't believe this. I've moved country to get away from these things, and they are here as well. But she'd seen them all her life, and she had only ever been scared a couple of times. They'd never tried to harm her, so why would they start now? So she just accepted that whatever was there, was there. It wasn't going to change. She wasn't going to make them go away. She couldn't get rid of them. So she just had to accept that they were just going to be a part of her life. Except now they started playing tricks on her. They started moving things around the apartment. She would place something down, she'd know exactly where it was, and five minutes later, it would be somewhere completely different. And this was things that were important, things that she needed. So she always knew where she had put these things. And instead of having something placed on the table, ready to take out to work, suddenly it was in the bathroom and in the bath. And so this made no sense. She clearly wasn't moving these things something was moving these things. So now these things were becoming a bit of a problem because these were things that were important and these entities or whatever they were, were now messing with her life. And she decided to rely on something that she'd learned from her grandma Maria back in Puerto Rico. And she'd showed her how to cleanse the rooms. And she told me, it was some kind of white candles and white sage that she would perform this cleanse with. The only thing is, after the cleanse, it just made things worse. Whatever she had done had angered the entities that were following her. And now, at night time, all she would hear were cupboard doors banging, opening and shutting, cutlery being thrown around the kitchen. She would hear doors opening 
door slamming shut, and eventually she would then start to hear voices. These things were calling out to her in the voice of her mother and her best friend, and they were calling her name. Yet, they still lived in Puerto Rico, and she was the only person in the apartment. How is this possible? She was getting very scared. And so it was around this time that she decided to invite her boyfriend to come and move in with her, which he did. So he moved into the apartment and for a time, things started to settle down a little bit. But this respite was rather short. And at nighttime, Kai would see this one shadow person all night long standing over her as she slept and she would wake up and go to sleep and wake up and go to sleep and every time she woke up this shadow person was in the room watching over her and this terrified her because she'd never experienced this before and what made it worse was that each and every day the shadow person got nearer and nearer and nearer she turned around and she told Robert what had been going on and he just said it must be sleep paralysis. That is most likely what it is. And she was like, well, no, because I am not asleep when I see these things. I am not asleep when I call out to you to tell you what I am seeing and you hear me. That is not sleep paralysis. I am moving around when I am also telling you what I am seeing and you cannot tell me that that is sleep paralysis. And this is something that would reoccur every single night. And Robert and Kai would get into this back and forth about what it was that she was actually seeing. Robert was passing it off as maybe some shadow effects from the trees outside or some kind of sleep paralysis. And Kai was adamant of what she was seeing. Shortly after at nighttime, Kai awoke to the shadow person that had been getting closer and closer and this shadow person was now on top of her just several inches away face to face and she could see features she could see everything about him his skin his nose and the thing she remembers is this crazy weird smirk that it had on its face she also noticed that it was covered in dirt at this point she screamed out and she pushed as hard as she could to try and throw this thing off of her. And Robert saw this. He saw his girlfriend push up and push away as hard as she could. So he couldn't deny what he actually saw. He saw her shove something. And he also heard her say something as she shoved this thing off. He couldn't see what it was, but he definitely knew that she was moving in some way and definitely shoving something off. But again, the two of them got into this row, this really heated row. And at this point, it was clear that the two of them were not going to agree on what was going on. In fact, for the next several days, they barely spoke because Kai was so upset with Robert's denial of what was going on in her life. Around about a week after this, both of them were retiring for bed and they needed a shower. So to save time, the two of them jumped into the shower together. And Robert, he finished up before Kai. So he left and he went out of the bathroom, down this small hallway, which was only about four feet long, into the bedroom. That's where he started to dry off. And Kai and Robert were having a conversation because they were only four or five feet away from each other. At some point during this conversation, Robert becomes incredibly silent and then shouts out for Kai to come quick and to leave the shower. And she had never been spoken to by him like that before, so she thought something was a little bit strange. So, of course, she gets out of the shower and she goes to investigate why he was calling her to come quickly and come out of the shower. She walks down the hallway to the bedroom door and that's where she's met by Robert who's looking directly past her down the hallway into the bathroom to where they had this big mirror on the wall. And he asks Kai to turn around 
and have a look at what he can see. So she turns around and she looks down the hallway to into the mirror and that's where she sees the reflection of the shadow man. The shadow man that had been stalking her her entire life. It was about seven feet tall. It had a hat on, a trench coat, all in black, very dark, and it had fiery red burning eyes. The two of them saw it and they were looking at this thing for about five seconds before it just completely vanished. But there was no denying that the two of them had just seen the same thing. At this point, Kai turns around to Robert and asks, did you see that? And he said, yes. And she asks, what did you see? And he tells her, which was essentially the same thing that she'd just seen. And after Robert has said what he saw, Kai becomes very excited, overly excited. And she walks over to the place where they both seen this shadow person. And she thanks the shadow person and says, thank you for showing my partner what I've been seeing. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate you doing that. And by the way, if you would, please appear to him more. Please do things to him more so that he can see exactly what I'm seeing. So she literally invited the shadow person to stay around a little bit longer. Over the next week, Robert became very distant. He didn't show the same emotion that he'd been showing in any of the previous months they'd been together. And the two of them kind of drifted apart for a time. Kai was unsure what was going on, but she put it down to the fact that he was probably scared and probably didn't really want to talk about what they had seen because, well, Kai would bring it up whenever they spoke. So to avoid that conversation, it's probably best not to speak to each other, which is pretty much what happened. And around about a week went by and the two of them are in bed. Robert's fallen asleep before Kai, who's reading a book. And all of a sudden, she just notices that Robert is having a seizure. She turns over and she can see that Robert's eyes are in the back of his head. And he is thrashing around in the bed in some kind of fit. She's seen this before, but she's never seen it with Robert. In fact, she didn't know that he had seizures, but she was aware of what to do and she rolled him onto his side. After around about 30 seconds of this seizure, Robert calms down and it appears to all intents and purposes that he's just gone back to sleep. But Kai wasn't going to settle for that. She was going to wake him up. She needed to find out what had just gone on and she wanted to check on him. She wanted to make sure that he was okay. So she prods and she pushes him to wake him up and he does. He slowly wakes up and he's asking her, why are you waking me up? And she explains what's just gone on. She said, you've just had a seizure and I had to roll you on your side to save your life. And he was quite confused because he'd never had seizures before and he's hearing this for the first time. But that's when he opens up and he decides to tell her what had just happened to him, what he just remembers had happened because he didn't remember the seizure, but he certainly remembered something in his dream. And in his dream, he had been seeing the shadow figure and the shadow figure had been getting closer to him and closer to him until the point that it was literally on top of him. And in the background, he could hear that Kai was talking in the dream and he could hear that she was talking about performing an exorcism or a cleanse to rid the apartment of these shadow people. Now this story was told to me over a year ago on the Almost Unbelievable channel. I have reached out to try and find if there's been any update on this story and find out where the story ends. After several days of waiting, I've heard nothing back yet, but I assure you that if I do hear anything else about this story, I will let you know in an upcoming video. So what do you think, guys? What was going on? Is Kai crazy? Is there some other explanation as to what's been going on? I don't know. Is the voodoo real? Is that a thing that could have brought these entities there? You tell me. But before you do that, 
don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and yes, leave a comment, and I will speak to you in the next one. Take care.